Hello F1 fans, my name is Aaron and this is the 5 Red Lights. In this video I'm going to share my top 3 performers from the 2020 Belgian Grand Prix. So, 5 Red Lights are out in this video, without any further hesitation, let's go for it! Okay, so in 3rd place of my top 3 performers from the 2020 Belgian Grand Prix, I've got Lando Norris. Uh, so McLaren's hopes took a, uh, their hopes for big points, took a big plunge before the lights went out. Uh, a power unit failure, uh, an exhaust issue for Carlos Sainz, uh, left him out of the race before it even started. So all the pressure suddenly thrust onto the 20 year old uh, shoulders of Lando Norris. And he delivered. Brilliant race. Um, and if he start, he, he dropped down to 11th. Um, so he started 10th. He, and then because Sainz, who qualified 7th, uh, wasn't starting. So he essentially started 9th. But he actually lost then two places uh, on the opening lap. He made a mistake uh, at Lecom. He said it, it was a little bit of water or oil uh, there as he tried to open up the corner and he just sort of slid off. Uh, he ran off the track, went across the, the sleeping policeman. Um, and also the fast starting Charles Leclerc uh, nipped through as well. But he, he gazumped quite a few people. But Lando's pace in the opening stint brought him back into contention. He passed Leclerc and he held on to the back of um, the guys in front of him, so Perez, Gasly, uh, Albon, and he he was helped by the DRS, but everyone had the set the same uh, opportunity there. Perez and Gasly being on the contra strategy promoted him up the order, but overall it was a really, really solid drive, uh, and he passed the racing point of uh, Lance Stroll um, with the DRS in, into Lecom, where he early, earlier made his mistake. And he closed in on the battle with, with uh, Albon and Ocon uh, towards the end. So had he had a couple more laps, I think he would have passed Albon. And he, he may have even had a, a chance of uh, chasing down Ocon. But seventh place, jumped McLaren into third in the championship standings uh, for the constructors. So a really, really good race. And it shows real maturity from such a young man uh, to be able to deliver that just on his own. Obviously, if science had been in the race, I think Carlos would have finished... Uh, a place or two ahead, perhaps, simply given he was starting seventh. Um, he might have given Daniel Ricciardo a bit more of a run for fourth place, perhaps. But, um, you know, solid weekend for McLaren. Some, some handy points, moving them up to third in the Constructors. And moving on to my second place driver in my top three performers from the Belgium Grand Prix, it's going to Pierre Gasly. Uh, a tough weekend on a personal note for him because obviously the um, friendship he had with Antoine Hubert, who was sadly uh, killed in an accident in the F2 race last year at Spa. And it was an OK qualifying for him. He started 12th on the grid and you could have forgiven Alfa Tauri for splitting the strategies between Gasly and Kvyat with one on the soft and one on the medium. But they kind of gambled a little bit, um, putting Gasly on the hard tyre. Uh, and that's we've only really seen that previously this season at uh, the 70th anniversary Grand Prix. Uh, Max Verstappen starting on the hards, and I think maybe a couple of other drivers might have done the same uh, as well. So Gasly made a, made a decent start, and some smart overtakes put him in a really good position when the safety car was deployed. But we should just hold it there and mention his pass on Perez on lap two, heading into Eau Rouge. What a brave, fearless! amazing i mean there, there are three words that i can use to describe it overtake that was just so much bravery and he said that even though perez was squeezing him he wasn't going to back out and they're speeding towards the corner they're building speed down the hill perez is squeezing him as much as he's allowed it's maybe a little bit a touch too much but pierre stuck at it he made it stick um bravery sheer bravery and courage and that move alone sort of deserves some points. An eighth place at the flag after coming back through from the contra strategy and being slightly uh, impeded by the, the safety car. So everyone else was on softer tyres, well, fresh tyres and softer tyres because I think they all went to, some of them went to the mediums, most of them went to the hards, so fresh or softer tyres. Um, came back through on the mediums and picked up some nice points for Alpha Tauri, which uh, will go down very nicely. And obviously, an important weekend for him on a personal note because of uh, 
his friendship with Antoine. And he, he really sort of kept himself together and focused on what he needed to do and delivered a really, really, really good drive. And it's consistent over this season. He's just been so good in that Alpha Tauri. Um, obviously, having struggled last year in the Red Bull and then been demoted, and we're seeing Albon struggles now. But I think that's something to do with the way the two cars handle and and their um their driving styles uh, that are required. And our top performer of the weekend, my top performer of the weekend, uh, is Daniel Ricciardo, the Renault driver, uh, the Honey Badger, the smiling Aussie. Um, brilliant race from him. Spa really suited the Renault, and uh, the, the layout of it, the the low drag. So they were able to maximise their speed on the straight. But for Daniel to bag P4 on the grid on Saturday, having got through Q2 with a single run, was just outstanding. He had a break-by-wire issue, so he had to sit and wait uh, for everyone else to do their laps and pray that he, he'd done enough to get through. But it was a really, really tidy lap. And then he put himself fourth on the grid in Q3, aborted his last lap. I don't think he was going faster but he'd already done enough to uh, secure that position. And it was so good to have him back up the front. And he was really fancied by a lot of people, myself included, to just sweep past those in front of him, the, the, uh, the Red Bull of Verstappen and the two Mercedes on the front row, and possibly take the lead into Le Com on lap one, which would have been absolutely amazing. As it was, he battled hard with Max Verstappen through the Le Com and Malmody complex, both drivers running wide at different points. How we've missed Daniel being at the sharp end of a grid. Uh, and you could see that he was relishing it as much as we were. Uh, and he was challenging the front three on the opening lap, which was great to see. Unfortunately, he didn't have the race pace to keep up with those three. They're just sort of, sort of in a league of their own. But he, he just did a brilliant job. He was there on his own. He was a little bit lonely. But... He, he was fourth pretty much the whole way through, uh, apart from when he dropped a couple of places behind Perez and Gasly, who didn't pit under the safety car. Um, he passed them, using the, the slippy nature of the Renault to good effect. Secured fourth place. And was actually closing on everyone else while, in front of him while they were nursing their battered tyres to the flag. Um, and then he even smashed the fastest lap on the last lap uh, to earn an extra point. Uh, so 13 points overall for Daniel, and it became Renault's best ever weekend. They scored uh, 23 points in total because Esteban Ocon came in fifth. So great leadership from, from Danny. Hopefully he can stay there. I think there's a few tracks coming up that will suit the Renault quite nicely in like a low drag configuration. Obviously, when they go around corners, it's not so great, but Danny, Danny Rick had the uh, the balance of the the straight line speed and enough speed around the corners in the middle section to keep himself out of touch, keep his tyres alive and generally did a first class job. It would be easy to say that Hamilton or Verstappen did the best job because Hamilton won the race or Verstappen was possibly outperforming his car. But Ricardo did the best job he could possibly have done in that Renault without something happening to the top three. So to be best of the rest in P4 is brilliant for him, brilliant for Renault. It leaps them into contention for third place in the championship, with the constructors. So Daniel Ricciardo, a well-earned number one in uh, my top three performers for the 2020 Belgian Grand Prix. Thanks for watching, everyone. Leave a like and let me know in the comments who your top three drivers were from this weekend's uh, Grand Prix. Check out the Five Red Lights website. Uh, follow us on Twitter at Five Red Lights underscore uh, Red underscore Lights and on Instagram for at Five Red Lights. And find our podcast on Google, Spotify, Apple, and many others. I'll leave all the links for everything in the description below. Thanks again for watching, and I will see you in the next video, which will be the Italian Grand Prix top three drivers next week. Goodbye for now.